I'm Langdon White, and I work on Red Hat Enterprise Linux as a platform architect. And so what that really means is that I mostly work in Fedora. And we're currently working on the Fedora modularity project, trying to look for how do we make application life cycles independent from each other uh, without losing all of the advantages of a distro. Uh, Red Hat software collections are uh, based around uh, kind of the Gartner pace layers, uh, the idea of the systems of differentiation. So basically, the kinds of applications you want to write that differentiate your company from your competitors. And as a result, the software that you write in that kind of space, generally speaking, has a shorter life cycle than something like a system of record. So unlike your ERP that you spend a million dollars and build once and uh, run forever, as if you can, right? that's a great thing for native RHEL. Uh, when you use software collections, it's more targeted at the applications that you want to refresh every you know, couple of years. Uh, and so you're going to come back to it. And as a result, uh, when you're using the software collections, uh, you know they have a much shorter life cycle than native RHEL. It's you know it's two to three years rather than ten years, uh, and so you want to make sure that you're picking the right kinds of applications. Red Hat software collections are a kind of a, a almost eclectic mix of of tools that you use as a developer, both kind of on your desktop, but then also in production. Uh, so it's kind of anything with a runtime. Uh, so things like Python, for example, or Ruby, or Node.js, or whatever. Um, and then we kind of also have some of the servers that you might use to build kind of typical applications. So like Apache HTTPD, uh, MariaDB, Postgres, those kinds of things. But it's generally speaking the uh, this set of tools that you want to use as kind of more cutting edge, they're changing a lot, um, and uh, you know you want to, you need to do the development locally, and then you deploy it to production uh, using the same components. Sometimes when people look at the software collections, uh, they're not always sure why we include the components we include. Um, and what we do, actually, is we look at certain kind of use cases that a developer might want to do uh, kind of with the software collection, and that kind of drives what we put in that particular software collection, especially around like libraries. So one of the examples is Drupal. So what we do is for the PHP collections, we actually say to ourselves, it's like, if I wanted to just immediately install Drupal, let me include all of the things that I would need to do that in the PHP software collection. Uh, so that I can kind of say, you know, yum install PHP SEL, whatever it's called, um, and then I can essentially download and run Drupal and be done. Red Hat software collections uh, are not kind of just the actual component themselves, right? Uh, they, things like Node.js, for example, it's not just Node.js you get, you actually get a bunch of libraries that uh, Node.js uses, uh, and we include those in the software collection. Uh, we often get asked, how do we choose which things go in that bucket? Well, honestly, what we do is we kind of think about certain use cases the developer might want to get to. So for example, in the Node.js case, we look at uh, Express and we say, okay, if you do yum install Node.js, they should be able to immediately kind of run Express afterwards. Many developers using uh, software collections, uh, so for example with like Node.js or whatever, um, obviously continuously there are new libraries that a developer might want to use that we, we just cannot keep up with, right? Nobody can keep up with. Uh, so the developers who are using those components, they often will identify certain libraries that they think they're comfortable with using, et cetera. Um, and uh, there's a lot of due diligence there. There's a lot of work there to make sure that you're choosing libraries that are solid and have the life cycle that match what you want, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and what we normally recommend for how a developer should then kind of say, okay, I, I'm choosing this library and I'm using it, uh, is they actually should include it in uh, what we refer to as a dependent uh, software collection. So that you have a kind of almost another software collection that it depends on the one we ship, and then that is actually what gets deployed to production. So there's a bunch of uh, articles and uh, kind of how to's and that kind of stuff, both in uh, the customer portal and in developer blog about how to make dependent collections um, and how to kind of approach the problem so that you're making kind of good RPMs that are useful uh, and, and good for production. So you've heard about software collections. And uh, you know you know that the Python that's in there is interesting for you because you know the guy down the hall told you it was useful. Um, 
it's important to take a look at what's actually else is in there because uh, it's not just other languages, right? It's not just Node and Ruby and stuff you're not really interested in. It's also things like Apache and Nginx and MariaDB. Uh, so I highly recommend that you check out developer blog, look at the software collections kind of tag and look at what else is in there and at what uh, uses people are putting software collections to uh, because all of that stuff is kind of covered on the blog website. And it's easy because as we kind of talked about earlier, uh, the it's kind of an eclectic mix, uh, and it's important to kind of see what else is in there, because you might be surprised that there's things that are useful that may not be obvious, uh, you know, if you just think about it from a Python perspective.